PC because I'm Nick. Gigabyte sent over one of their RTX 3060 Ti gaming ACs for us to check out, so we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks with both Windows and Linux and see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs that we've had through the studio. This time, we also have a founder's card to compare it to, so let's check out this new card from Gigabyte. As far as availability with these new 3060 Ti cards, from what I can see, there are stock in most places, but I'm talking about like local stock in Australia, of course. I can't speak for the rest of the world, but from what I've seen, it's pretty easy to get a 3060 Ti in Australia. With that said, there's a lot of data to unpack in this video, just like the rest of our benchmarking videos. There's also chapters in all of these videos, so if you wanna to jump to a certain section of a video, you can mouse over the progress bar, or check out the timestamps in the description. Also, make sure you watch this entire video to get the context of what we're trying to say in this video. These are the out of the box figures. All of our GPU videos are designed to be this way because a vast majority of people will never overclock their GPUs. And this is more indicative of real users and for people who wanna know how these GPUs overclock, we're actually going to come back to this in a separate video comparing other ARB versions to the 3060 Ti that we've got here. Now, we've had a pretty significant shipping delay and we're still waiting for some cards to arrive as with everything this year anyway. Also, we don't have a Radeon 6800 to compare to in this video, so that's why you're not seeing it here. Okay, let's get the benchmarks and comparisons out of the way first. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database. People get confused about that, but that's just the way we do it. Now these graphs change because cards that perform differently sometimes get knocked off the bottom of the graph. Some people don't like it like I already mentioned, but that's what works for us. We also use our regular test bench as well, and this gives you guys accurate results because we use the same hardware to test our GPUs every single time. Let's kick this off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic pause button at any time during this video to take a look at the graphs for a little bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing, even with the 1080p benchmark, is that the 3060 Ti Gaming OC is slightly faster than the 2080 Super and the Founders Edition 3060 Ti. This isn't the trend with the rest of the results in this video. It's a real mixed bag between the Gaming OC and the Founders Edition. When we compare Windows and Linux, we're seeing the Linux performance be slightly better than with Windows with Vulkan vs DX12, and this is basically always the case, and you're gonna see this with all of the other cards across these graphs too. We put the 3060 Ti's right next to the 2080 Super for a quick reference as well, because this is really where this card is being positioned. At 1440p, we're seeing a pretty small uplift compared to the 2080 Super. In comparison to the Founders Cards results, they're about the same in this instance. If we look at the Linux benchmarks, we're seeing the exact same results with both of these cards as well. At 4K, we're seeing the same being echoed with Windows being slightly faster, but yeah, the, the 3060 Ti is only marginally faster than the 2080 Super, and both the 3060 Ti Gaming OC and the Founders Edition perform about the same. All right, let's move on to Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We use a 4K optimized preset, 1080p extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. We sometimes get comments along the lines of us using the stock OpenGL implementation in Linux and the DX11 implementation in Windows for comparison. We're only comparing the out of the box experience in this video. First up with the 1080p Extreme benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound and again, we're seeing the Gaming OC equaling the 2080, the 2080 Super and the 3060 Ti Founders Edition in Windows. In Linux, the OpenGL version does not perform as well and that's just how it is with Linux out of the box. This is regardless of the kernel or the driver being used and we're seeing both 3060 Ti's performing exactly the same at 1080p Extreme.
At 1440p in Windows, the 3060 Ti is slightly faster than the 2080 Super and exactly the same as the Founders Edition again. In Linux, all of the cards around the middle of this graph from the 3070 down to the 6800 XT are performing relatively close to each other with only a few frames being different. At 4K, we're seeing the same thing happen with Windows that we saw with the 1080p Extreme Benchmark. The gaming OC is equivalent to the 2080, the 2080 Super, and the 3060 Ti Founders Edition. In Linux at 4K, the gaming OC is only a single frame behind the Founders Edition. Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and for Linux as well. At 1080p, we're seeing the gaming OC coming in slightly behind the Founders Edition. In Linux, the 3060 Ti gaming OC is around about five frames faster than the Founders Edition card. At 1440p in Windows, it shows both the 3060 Ti Gaming OC and the Founders Edition performing exactly the same. In Linux, we're seeing the same result being echoed with both cards performing exactly the same again. Now, we mentioned in our 3060 Ti Founders Edition video that you can check out in the top right hand corner if you want, that we decided to omit the Shadow of the Tomb Raider DLSS and RTX benchmarks, as well as Death Stranding, because you guys have told us that it didn't really matter to you. And like we already mentioned in another video, we're working on a new suite of ray tracing and DLSS slash Fidelity FX benchmarks. And we're gonna introduce that next year when we do a mega roundup to show you absolutely everything, but you're gonna to have to wait till next year because we've still got a lot to get through before the end of the year. We also ran our one hour stress test in Fermark and we couldn't get the 3060 Ti Gaming OC above 64 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. This result is really good and it runs about five degrees cooler than the Founders Edition. The Gaming OC's cooler is much larger, but still five degrees is five degrees. And be aware though, again, like we always mention that we're running on an open air test system. The results in a closed system will be far different from what we observed, but we do this and this result is relevant because we use the same testing parameters for every single video. As far as power consumption, we observed it pulling around 213 watts at full load over the period of one hour. Now, I couldn't find the advertised board power consumption, but I'm gonna say it's around the same as the Founders Edition, which is 200 watts. So slightly over that 200 watt mark with the gaming OC. We also observed the 3060 Ti gaming OC to have near silent operation with zero coil wine over our entire stress testing period. And you have to remember again, this is an open air test system and you're going to hear absolutely everything. In a closed system, you probably won't hear this card at all. Now these acoustic observations, they just make way more sense for normal people who don't understand all of the numbers from acoustic testing. That stuff just doesn't make sense. And acoustics are only tangible if the card is sitting next to you, otherwise, those numbers don't really mean that much. What makes this card different to the Founders Edition though? 
Now, there's a few little things that do make this different. The first thing you'll notice is it doesn't use the new 12 pin power connector. It just uses a single standard eight pin PCIe power connector. The PCB itself is considerably shorter than the cooler on the card. The power connector, unlike the 3070 and 3080 gaming OC cards from Gigabyte, is directly on the PCB with solid pins. Now we talked about the issue with using hollow pins in another video, and there's a link to that in the top right hand corner right now, but it's good that this has solid pins. Overall, I'm also liking the size of this card. It's a two slot card that measures around 282 millimeters in length. It's about four centimeters longer or 40 millimeters longer than the founder's card. However, it's still a two slot card. So it should fit pretty easily in most use cases. It's got minimal RGB on the card as well with basically just the logo and the light strip lighting up. It's nice to have this option, but yeah, it's not really necessary, but it can be controlled in RGB fusion as well. As far as pricing for the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti Gaming OC, it's going for around 480 US dollars or around 859 Australian dollars at the time of filming. Okay, well this is obviously subject to availability and this is where I'm just gonna deviate from the video just for a second, right? I, I just wanted to talk about this that in Australia, we are getting absolutely reamed with GPU prices. Now, if I convert $859 to US dollars at the time of filming this video, it's 640 US dollars. 640 is nowhere near 480 US dollars. These board partners really need to sort out the local pricing here in Australia. If we convert 480 US dollars to AUD, that's around 650 Australian dollars, except we're getting charged 859 Australian dollars. It's pretty ridiculous, I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, guys, what do you think about the 3060 Ti Gaming OC? I think this is one of the better generational leaps, and I said this with the original Founders video too, I think the 3060 Ti is actually pretty attractive, but let us know what you think in the comments and let us know if you're interested in grabbing one of these cards for yourself. I'm keen to hear all of your thoughts about it. The Australian pricing though, what is going on? I'm, I'm just not okay with that. It's too much money. It should not be this expensive. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do. Hit that dislike button twice. If you want to go early access to videos just like this one, head on over to our flow plane. And if you like the music, I make all the music. It's available over on our Patreon. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You seek, we peak. People wanted me to say it backwards, Claire, but it's you peak, we seek. Yeah. They're like, oh, it doesn't make sense if you say you peak, we seek. I'm like, of course it does. You guys are peeking out the video and we're going out to look for the new hardware. Makes lots of sense. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you had a great weekend. If it is like the weekend whenever you're watching this or the Monday, I don't know when you guys are gonna watch this. I don't even know when this video is coming out. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We're getting reamed in Australia for pricing. Just gonna add that again right at the end. For people who are just hanging out right at the end of the video. What is going on with Australian pricing? Sort this out. And I know it's been like this for ages, but just sort it out. It's stupid, right? I've actually got the card sitting right here too. I don't know why I didn't pick it up during the video at all. Hmm. Here's a thumbnail, Claire. Pity I've already done it. Pity will never do thumbnails like that. I think they're pretty lame. Yeah.